Welcome to Chasing Man. I'm your host, Liam McAwee. So what is Chasing Man? Simply, it's just man chats. The whole idea of these man chats is just to hear people's journeys through life, the challenges and the adversity that they've faced along the way. The whole idea is so you can grab some of their tools to throw in your toolbox. So if you ever come to the same situation in your own life, you know how to deal with and get through those situations. If you really enjoy what we're doing here at Chasing Man, please like and subscribe and maybe share it with a friend. Today I'm blessed and honored to have Jan Zabowski on board. Jan is a humble, strong Pacific Island male who loves to give back to his community. And you'll hear in this conversation, the man lives from a place of zealous, which means he lives his life with eagerness and enthusiasm. And I think he shows that in today's show. I hope you really enjoy this. I loved doing this episode. We actually stayed uh, on the call for about 30 minutes afterwards, catching up. So it was fantastic. Enjoy. And by all means, as the big man says, try and live from a place of gratitude and zealous. Give it a go. Welcome to Chasing Man, guys. Uh, as you know, Liam here. And today, lucky enough, which I was supposed to do before we started because I wanted to get his last name pronunciation right. So, Jan, do you want to crank your last name for me, bro, so I don't screw it up? Uh, Zabowski. It's, it's all right. I'm, I'm not easily offended with... Um names being mispronounced but yeah Zabowski it is Zabowski Zabowski it is and the Zabowski it'll stay hey bro awesome to have you on board today so um do you want to give the listeners a, a little bit of a catch-up of who you are what you're all about and basically just a I don't know a quick little timeline of yourself from you know your younger days to where you're at right now bro yeah yeah for sure uh, thanks for having me on man it's a pleasure um, it's good good to catch up as well um yeah, so Jen Zabowski, I was um, born in uh, Australia, so I was like 11 or 12, something like that, yeah. And then um, the youngest of five, two brothers, two sisters. Um, my mum got, my mum brought us up pretty much. We all had different dads, but the same mum. Um, so our mum pretty much brought us up. And then obviously the older siblings helping out as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, mum got schizophrenia when it was like eight or nine. And um, so my older sisters, they moved on in life, you know, because they got a bit older. So it was just me and my two brothers at home. And since they moved moved out, one was in Canberra, one was in New Zealand. They both said, if you know, we wanted to come stay with them, um, just for uh, just a more of a was it like you know settled household type of thing. And my auntie and uncle as well. So. Me and my brother and mum, we came over to New Zealand. My other brother went to stay with our sister in Canberra. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, yeah, I was a big footy player growing up. That was the dream. Um, didn't work out, obviously. And uh, I, I, I had some bum jobs in between because I was lost, you know, because I was my, my whole dream and whole life was dedicated to playing professional rugby league and I didn't make it. But I had a mate uh, as I was playing. He was a personal trainer. and um, I really liked his lifestyle, you know, training people, you know, we we drove to training together and I was like, man, what do you get up to? And he's like, oh, I did a boxing class, had a couple of PTs. I was like, oh, that sounds like a cool life. And I was laboring at the time and I did some carpet cleaning and different things. So I um, enrolled in the next intake of PT. So I did two years of study in um, Newcastle, Australia. And uh, yeah, so along the way, I um, had a friend in my class who was in the CrossFit. And uh, so he got me into it a bit and I had a rugby mate who was into it as well. We were playing footy and the, and the training got rained out because of, um, yeah, the rain. So, yeah. so we ended up, uh, he invited us to uh, train at his box. And um, so, yeah, a bit of a combination of my mate at rugby and my mate at my, my class got hooked on CrossFit. I, um, I had a job as a you know normal personal trainer at a global gym. Yep. And, um, then, uh, you know, moved back to New Zealand after pursuing, you know, the rugby league career. And I opened up a box with uh, me and my family after about a year and a half training in my uncle's garage. Yeah, bro. Uh, I love those videos of your old school training days, eh? Like out at the park <laughs> and 
just just like and uh, I see you were on the podcast there the other day for the uh, what was that one the garage gyms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With our uh, Stefan, he's a uh, yeah, good friend as well. But yeah, we we did that year and a half in my uncle's garage, so they, they took a sim that were massive for us. And uh, yeah, friends and family would come here and there, but there was a core group of about six of us, and that really brought in. And after year and a half, year and a half, we put our money together. I got affiliated, and and you know, you would know as well. So we we found the spot, and we did that for eight years, and loved it. Eh? It was a good journey, a lot of learning, a lot of ups and downs, but grew a lot and learned a lot. Made a good, made a lot of great connections. So for the listeners, uh, yeah, even Liam, he he's uh, we I met him through CrossFit as well, and then we went to the CrossFit Games one year, and uh, he's the one who introduced me to the owner of CrossFit, uh, Greg Glassman. I was I was wandering around. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. And so I was walking around. I, was, uh, I saw Leah. I was like, hey, what's up, bro? And then he was like, oh, I'm just about to catch up with the crew soon. And I was like, oh, you're going to introduce me? And he's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. So we went around. They rocked up. And uh, I didn't know if this was real or what. And then, you know, like we went into some uh, room, like a box, you know, and uh, Greg Glassman was there. He had, um, like, uh, some guy that looked after him must have been his PA or something, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's his PA, yeah. And, yeah, and then yeah, there was a couple of the other crew that were up there, and yeah, so got to meet old uh, Greg Glassman, and I think we had a beer as well. And then yeah, I felt we like, had a oh. beer with Greg, and remember, like <laughs> we were sitting there, Greg's chatting away and chatting away, and then I can't remember. Uh, oh, I've got it in my contacts, but his PA sort of comes up to us and goes, "Hey guys, uh, awesome to have you guys here, but..." Your time's up. You're out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that as well, yeah. Um, so, we, we, yeah, we, that was, that was kind enough to let us hang out, hang out for a beer and then it was time to move on. But, no, that, that was cool. It was good times. Um, so, yeah, thanks for hooking me up with that. No, Otherwise, I would have kept wondering, man. I don't think I would have um, run into old Greg. That's, cool. uh, I mean, but that's yeah, so life, the box. right, isn't it? So, like, serendipitous that, like, you're just in the right place at the right time. And lo and behold, you just don't know where you end up in life, right? Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, that's a good, uh, yeah, good way of putting it. So the eight years, did the box, and then um, I probably would have kept doing it, but I got a, yeah. Hey, uh, my wife's uh, six months pregnant. Uh, um, so yeah, uh, six months pregnant. So I was like, <coughs> oh, I felt it was time to get out. Uh, we had a le- lease renewal and I was like, oh, I think my time's up. Just spend more time with my wife and my, my two girls, oh, my girl and my girl uh, that's going to be born soon. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of other, oh, not a lot, a few other affiliate owners and they, they got out for similar reasons. Just the time, like, you it's, know, it's, it's rough, worth- mate. Eh? Like, it's a great lifestyle, but, you know, I mean, you, you're the entrepreneur man yourself, obviously, being through all that. When, the, when, when people talk about the grind, that's 100% what it is, bro. Because, I mean, I know for a fact that you guys grinded, right? Your, your box was where you li- both lived and, and trained and worked. And, like, that's – it's a great, it's a great, great, great lifestyle. But it's an unhealthy lifestyle as well sometimes, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's good. I think it was really good. Like when you're in your early twenties, um, coming up to your thirties, then you sort of want to start moving out. If you haven't like, cause I know some people have got it down, you know, I didn't quite figure it out how to make, like be totally hands off. You know what I mean? Yep. But some people, some people figure out a few people, but we, we were still quite, um, I was still quite hands on. I hadn't systemized it enough in a way that I, I didn't have to, um, you know, and I think a lot of CrossFit, CrossFit um, owners are a little bit like that, right? Because we fall in love with the sport and we're so passionate, you know, like I know I'm, I'm an all in guy, right? So I go absolutely batshit crazy. And then I think, oh, I don't actually know anything about business. <laughs> and then for me, it was all about like, oh, I need to get somebody in here to sort of teach me how to do this properly. And when I had the systems and stuff in place, God, it made life so much easier. But but you've gone, I'd already gone like three or four years of, of struggling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, we're exactly the same, man. Yeah, 
just all this passion and eagerness to help people and you know we love the sport and we love crossfit yeah same man we, you know just knew nothing about business and tried to pay catch up you know did some courses which are really good and you know helped us with the business side and systemizing but we're already sort of like on the back foot you know same as you you know we've already been into it yeah three or four years and so it was a it was a big hole to so try to get out of you know yeah, I always found I was like ju- just scraping by and literally yeah, sure. always, always playing catch up, right? It was like, oh, I've, I've, I've got enough to pay the bills and I've got uh, to pay myself. So where do I pull that from now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, like you said, we, we me and Max, my uh, cousin and business partner, and so we lived there for maybe, uh, maybe four, five, six, yeah, I can't remember, it was, a, it was at least four months. We lived at the box. Um, like I said, it wasn't that bad at the time to me, like, but, you know, being older and a family, man, it's totally different. It's, wouldn't want to do it now. But when you're young and stuff, it was, it was sort of cool at the time. But yeah, yeah, yeah different sure. phases, different, different seasons of life, eh? So, yeah, and now so, I'm... Uh, well, sorry. sorry. No, you oh, don't. No, no, no. Now I'm uh, teacher aiding at a, at a high school and, yeah, loving that. So it's pretty good hours, like 8.15 to 3. And so I get to hang out with my daughter all um you know afternoon and i'm um, not um you know at the box all afternoon yeah what age group are you teacher eating um i'm mainly um learning support so more the younger ones uh like 14 15 16 type of thing yeah so people that uh kids struggling with their learning and that's awesome that too, man hey like i remember i don't know if you would know this about me i actually started uh, in um education i went to teachers college and you know the oh, well firstly the the training system itself i think i was one of four guys out of almost 200 people and just the lack of uh you know male role models out, out there in the teaching world is huge bro so for you to go out there and do that is just uh it's so cool to see um what made you want to do that it was um it was actually do you know jim winler the 531 guy no Oh, the five three one, as in working out five three one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he he's he's written that program. It's quite famous all around the world. But I listened to him speak a few times on podcasts, and he he one of them he talks about how he he's making enough money off his um, books and resources and that that he just volunteers for his own uh, his local uh, football team, and he, he's a strength and conditioning coach there. And uh, he's talking about how he loves it because. In his book world and um, you know his his resources and things that he sells, he loves it. But he, he a lot of his interactions is online. Yeah. But when he goes into the school and volunteers, he's working with people. He's sharing what he uh, he loves, and, and it's it's like you get to be patient. You know, like if you know if everything works out at the school, uh, you know I, I see the kids every day, and there's a lot of time with them. So I like the the time and, and building the relationship and it's not a rush like you know with the box you know people want results yesterday yeah. and uh, you know it's 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 where everybody everybody wants things quick in that but um you know as we know things take time and you gotta be patient you gotta be consistent and all these different things so you know it's probably his thing and um i just was like yeah I'm, I'm working a lot online and you know i know that's a necessary thing now it's just the way the world is e-commerce or just the way it goes, but I want to try to make my work where I'm working with people like, you know, face to face as much as I can, as much as I will have to do stuff online and working with kids and just trying to help. Cause I, you know, I didn't go to the next level in rugby league. So I want to help kids go to the next level in whatever their sports is. And, you know, I can use all the experiences and the lessons and things that I've learned along the way to help them, you know, to try to get that next level. Dude, that's amazing. And that's one thing I really noticed about you and your gym. Uh, zealous is the the tribe that you had created bro like i i'd never been to your box but obviously when we went away to comps you just had this fabulous crew that was really really cohesive when i watched your videos it was more than just working out on your videos bro i love the way that you guys would do your group huddles i know that uh you know spirituality and god for you guys was very important but you, you did more than have a gym bro you had a really really strong community talk to me a little bit more about like how that plays out in your life yeah we, we've, we've actually had a a few people would talk about this some of the sort of thing and uh 
I think, yeah, like you said, uh, uh, the faith of, you know, me and my sister and my brother-in-law, which is business partners, was obviously a big thing in, in the gym. We know we didn't never had a, a business plan or uh, degrees in business and stuff, but we just had faith that if we did the right thing and, and treated people well and, um, you know, tried to set a good example that things would work out, you know, and, and you know, they, they, they worked out pretty well. Not the, not the way that I wanted, you know, um, exactly, but, you know, they worked out really well and we made a big impact on people's lives and um, it was a really cool journey. But, yeah, it's, yeah, I, you know, everybody says we want it to be more than the gym, but so we're just trying to make the extra effort, like um, go watch people play sports if they, uh, you know, when we can, uh, you know, on the weekends or if they have different, you know, events and they just go along with support and, just not seeing people as a transaction, you know, like people come in, come people go out and just trying to chat before a class or after class. And, you know, I guess there's a lot of stuff that people say, but we, we really did try to <laughs> try to do that sort of stuff. Um, do you think um, yeah. sometimes that, that, that worked to a disadvantage as well? You know, like, I mean, you're obviously always trying to, to make money and get by and keep the, the place running. But did you, did you ever find that maybe, you know, you were too much of a yes man or like you, you gave a little bit too much and then realized, oh, God, I've, I've, I'm not doing enough for myself here. Yeah, man, 100%. Yeah, you're right. Like being too nice and um, giving a lot of our time. That's why now yeah, I wanted to get out because uh, the, the expectation that was we sort of created that it was normal, you know, but in a lot of other places, the things we would do, people would pay for. Yeah. You know, and but, it's hard um, to change that culture, huh? Once yeah, you get yeah. that culture. Yeah. So we would hang around and help people with muscle ups and snatches and stuff like that. But that was pretty much like a little PT, really. Yeah. Which we should have been charging for, but we learned it after the fact, and it was hard to go back um, and fix that. So yeah, definitely um, bit us in the backside later on. You know, like I said early on, I was full of energy and gusto, and it was all right. But then it takes a toll on you later, and. Um, you know, I don't know if it's to sound bad, but you know, if you're getting paid, it does feel a little bit better. You know, it doesn't hurt your energy as much. So, because we were like, oh shit, you know, people were just taking, 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 but it was our own fault because we, we, um, you know, we allowed it to happen. Yeah, I, I, I totally feel you on that one, bro. Because I remember when I had the little small garage and the the tribe and community was thick and strong, man. And then they said. I listened to the members. They said, oh, get a bigger gym. We want a bigger gym. Get a bigger gym. So you get a bigger gym, and then you you try and knuckle down and, and you know, make things work effectively. And they're like, all of a sudden, they're like, oh, how come we have to pay for Olympic lifting? Or oh, how, come, how come we have to pay for gymnastics? And then I just found the community changed because, like you said, the expectations were just so high that – I don't know. They felt cheated, I guess. They, they don't think yeah. about you, right? I, I, I find, and it's getting worse, bro, and that's why I love the work that you're doing with the kids, that in this day and age with the social media and this instant gratification, there's people that are, uh, I don't want to use the word self-centered, but like, you know, everybody is all about like that rat race and, and getting what they want out of life, whereas, you know, like, yourself the stuff that you do mate is focused around others which i really 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 appreciate so if if, if you haven't heard it bro thanks for doing what you're doing because it's awesome yeah no i appreciate it man like you know it sounds like we le we learned some similar lessons there now it's weird because now i'm really really careful of my time you know like i love training on my own and stuff and like people are like oh, i'll train with you or let's go and i'm like oh i don't know because i'll end up just coaching them or something like that you know <laughs> giving all my time and energy which is um you know it was all right back then but now i'm like i only want to train with other people that sort of know what they're doing so that, you know they can go hard and we can go hard i can go hard and we can you know sort of enjoy the time together not like coach you know yeah for sure and yeah, and, yeah. and, and that it's so important in life to have that self care bro like you you look after you I always say to my clients you know like if if you're not if you're not dispersing from a full uh, sorry if you haven't filled your own cup how can you fill somebody else's yeah 100% man that's, that's really well said and that was a big harsh uh, lesson you know uh to learn to learn that of, uh, you know, giving so much. And I mean, it was cool, you know, it was cool at the time. And 
uh, giving a lot out. And, and I think people, you know, they, they did take, um, but they, they, we had good people, you know, it was, just, it was our fault because we made it normal, you know. Um, so, yeah, that was. And you know, the great thing though is when you catch up with those members, they'll be whispering in your ear, it's not like it used to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it never is, eh? Yeah. But it was weird because they always say it's not like it used to be. But when we tried to change it, like, I like the new way. But they always like the the older members always like the old days. Oh, but I like the new days. It's it that weird. saying, "Hey, the the grass is always greener on the other side." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like you know, we had some new members come in, and we we changed some of the the systems, and you know, made it more professional. You know, like a proper business, and you know, the old members they didn't like it. Hey, eh? it was weird, but um. I loved it because it made it easier for us and we're more profitable. And, and it's so funny. Felt like everyone won. We everyone won, but yeah. When you're young, you you, you don't think, ah, oh, systems. Oh, who needs systems, right? And then you get them in yeah. place and you're like, oh, this is where success comes from. Yeah, yeah. Now now I'm trying to do it with everything, you know, like I'm like, oh, I'll start the podcast. I'm like, this is too hard. How can I make this easier? You know, whereas before I would just grind through things. Yep. You know, like, I'm like, oh, how can I make the setup faster? How can I edit faster? You know, now it's like with everything, like with my training, I'm, like, oh, I'm spending too long training. Like, I've got to condense this down. How can I do it? You know, you know so I, was, I was just about to link it to training, right? It's, a, it's about efficiency because as an yeah. athlete, you look at CrossFit, you know, you get all those haters saying, oh, you know, what's this skipping pull-up stuff? It's efficiency. You know, yeah. so we're working to be the most efficient and the best that we can on the performance floor, but yet we look at the rest of our lives and we're struggling, struggling, struggling. When we put in those efficiencies, we're like, oh, wow, this, this is brilliant. Like, I need this everywhere. Yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, it's got to be done, eh? Like, you know, yeah, like you said, as you get older, man, you just, you just realize how uh, important the time is. And when you say, you know, yes to things, you, you say no to other things, you know, so you... Uh, you know, you're doing things, you go with friends or family, you say yes, but you didn't really want to do it. Yeah. And you said no to the things that, yeah, like you said, fill, fill your cup and give you energy. And, uh, yeah, bro, time. That's the biggest commodity, right? We can't, we yeah. can't ever get it back. So, you know, you got to use it effectively. Bro, a couple of questions for you, you know, just linking to sort of like the, the manhood masculinity side of this. So, Zabowski is where's that originally from? Like, what's the roots for the, from that? So yeah, that's uh, my father's name. So my real name's Jan Zabowski. So Polish, yeah, it's a Polish. Polish, name. Polish. And so, dad sort of wasn't in the picture. How was that growing up as a uh, as a youngster in Australia? Yeah, it was weird. Eh? It was we didn't really know. Like, um, I know a lot of people feel really sad and down that they didn't have a father but for us it was like you didn't know we didn't know so we just thought it was normal sure um so we were never like gutted or anything about it but it just stuffs you up i think a little bit in terms of we feel like we missed the discipline in a certain in a certain way that i you know see my cousins and that they do have fathers family members they the, the father and the mother there's there's two important roles you know and the father you know they pull them in line and they have these little chats to them and it was like it was very powerful we didn't have that so yep. I think we're a little bit wild. Like our mum was like loving and caring. She took care of us. But when you get to like a teenagehood, you need a man sort of thing. For uh, sure, bro. You need those boundaries, eh? Yeah, yeah. So I think we missed that. And I think we're a little bit wild. Like we wasn't really naughty, but, you know, it would have been good to just have someone pull our heads in a bit uh, to certain times as little kids and that. So, yeah, that's that was a tough thing to try to learn later on. Um I learned that more from when I moved to New Zealand from my uncle. He was a big father figure for me. Yep. And just the way he brought up his family was really awesome um, with his two boys. Because that's why I noticed these little conversations and stuff that he would have with them. And, um, you know, Island Away, you know, there's a few. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was a uh, uh, few different techniques there. Um, so it's yeah, funny, though, like, you know, being uh, – so your mum's someone. Yeah, yeah. So my yeah, mum Samoan, my my dad was Polish. Yeah. Because you know, like you know, you always hear about the Samoan mums and ha and how strict they are. So was your mum strict? Yeah, she was until until she got schizophrenia. Um, you know, she used to give us hidings and she was really strict. We were we were brought up Catholic, so we'd have to pray every day at a certain time. And um, 
Yeah, so she was very strict. And then once she was, once she got schizophrenia, she was just struggling to deal with her own stuff, you know? Um, she was hearing voices. She was all right. You can, we could chat, but there should be sort of in and out of the conversation. So, and that must have been a, challenging. What age was that at? Yeah, like eight or nine or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that must have been really challenging as a youngster, mate. Like, you know, mm -mm. Like you said, dad, no dad was not a, a big thing because you didn't know what you didn't know. But then, you know, having mum go through what she had to go through, did you feel like you had to grow up a lot faster than you wanted? Yeah, for sure, man. Like we, you know, we, um, I live with my brother and his kids and stuff and they were a good family. So my brother, his wife and three kids and like, you know, they didn't know how to do anything. Like we, we had to do the dishes, washing and because mum wasn't going to do anything. You know, we had to learn how to cook from that stage she just you know she was just trying to look after herself really and so yeah we had to learn all that and <laughs> just the normal um nothing crazy but just the normal stuff that you need to do to run a house we but that's like, awesome was, as well we right were like little kids so, and we learn how to do the washing and yeah it's so funny and, like you know as as children we we want that that mother and that father but when we're put into a position where we have to grow up a little bit faster, like that sort of stuff has helped construct the man that I see in front of me today as well. Right. Yeah, for sure. I like, um, it was massive. There was like a turning point. I just, I remember she spewed up one time and, um, I, I helped her clean up, you know, I was like, but before that, I don't know, something just clicked on my head. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to step up here. And, um, you know, instead of just letting her do it, I, I want to, yeah, something just clicked, you know, I'm getting into a, a teenager, a young man, and yeah, just helped to clean up. And from then on, it was just, you know, I always had my ups and downs, but uh, something clicked that I had to step up in a way. And you know, my other brother, he was uh, probably the second role model for me too. So there was three boys and two girls, and my oldest brother, he quit school, at his, uh, I think maybe sixth form. Uh, which is second last year of high school to get a yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, no one knows forms anymore, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> like second last year of high school. <laughs> but, you know, he quit school um, to get a job so he could um, help pay the bills and and look after me and my other brother. And, uh, you know, because, like I said, we had to sort of cook our own dinner and stuff. And, um, you know, we started to have good food, you know, because my brother was, and he was helping mum pay the bills and get food because she was she was brainwashed by um by a cult a cult and uh, she was donating money to them and oh no so he, so he started uh taking over the bills and you know the money she was getting and putting it towards us you know as a family so he's a he, so my uncle and uh my brother were sort of big two father figure you know role models and guys i looked up to and now he's got his own family he's a great father and he still works hard. He still, you know, he does, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Just, you know, I must, he must have got it from then, you know, looking after me and my brother. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Do you think, um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that everything happens in our life leads us to where we are now. And, um, you know, that we go through good and we go through bad, but it doesn't matter. It's just what happens, right? And, and the way that you choose to deal with it brings you to the place that you are now. Looking back on on your younger days, bro, do you feel that you know the 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 way you were brought up and then the jumping around and you know no dad and mum going through her issues did that help create the grind that you have in you now? Yeah, man. Like, I think the greatest gift I got from all that was that um, we all we I appreciate everything. You know, so uh, things are going bad or whatever, seemingly. But like any little thing, I appreciate it. And I think, I don't know, just I didn't realize it was a gift because I'm around people and they'll like maybe look at the, the you know, negative side of things or whatever. But I just, yeah, it's like I'll see the positive in it. And I think because we didn't have much, it made, made us appreciate everything. Sure. You know, so um, I think like that's been a massive gift. So like because I used to have a bed and I uh, had like little holes in it and there'd be springs popping up into your butt a little bit. So we'd have yeah. to put another blanket over the top so you wouldn't feel it. And so like now when I have like a normal bed, I'm like, man, this is awesome. But when I'm like, you know, I've played footy and I played rep footy and stuff, we'll go away and people will complain about the beds. And I'm like, man, this is awesome. Yeah, what are you complaining about? <laughs> so yeah, I think it's just made me really grateful and like thankful for everything. Um, 
and then the grind as well like yeah just i guess knowing that you have to do it type of thing that um i think a lot of the kids here have mum and dad which is awesome like kids are usually more successful if they have their mum and dad together and they do well more like uh well you know emotionally and that type of thing like better stability but i think like sometimes they use that as um it's it's a bit of a bad thing because they know they can rely on it a lot yeah they just sit back and relax a little bit too much yeah like they can always fall back on it and you know we're supportive as a family but we all try to like hold our own and so you know obviously if i'm crumbling my family will step in but basically i know like it's on me i don't have mum or dad like mum mum's got no money yeah i don't know dad so i can't ask anybody you know i can ask my family but it's you know you don't really want to type of thing and so, so you have to you have to you have to do it for yourself you know you don't have mum or dad to you know give you handouts or whatever type of thing were there times for you where you, you know like i don't know it was tough and, and you just felt like giving up and if you did like how did you get through those periods uh, yeah everybody has ups and downs there you know um along the way and yeah same as me i had my ups and downs i remember uh you know crying on my bed and just be like man like what am i doing with my life you know i think everybody's had a couple of those moments um sure obviously yeah obviously my faith has been a big one um just knowing that this world is not you know the end type of thing mm-hmm. uh, and then uh so that's given me a lot of hope and uh yeah hope for the future and then also like books has been a big one man like uh, this is where i was just about to go because i saw your post there the other day man prolific reader huh um um, i I read a lot i'm a very slow reader but i'm very consistent um like because my me and my wife read and she's she gets through heaps easy but she has days off and stuff so i i don't really have days off of my reading um just really consistent with it and uh that and traveling, you know, have been the, the biggest teachers for me. Um, but yeah, just like some of the greatest minds uh, in the world, like in history, you know, they're in these $20, $30 books, man. And you can just pick their brains. Cause you know, I didn't have like, to me, I, I'm big on mentors. I had a mentor uh, sort of, I don't, he doesn't know me cause I can't afford to get him as a mentor, but I, I read a lot of his uh, emails and, stuff online this guy called ty lopez i don't know if you've heard of him yeah i know ty lopez yeah yeah of course so he, he's sort of like a guy i, I look up to so in a way because i believe you have that mentors in diff- different aspects so my brother and my uncle uh like my spiritual father figure mentors but he you know ty is sort of like a business type of mentor and then you know there's training mentors you know jim Willen, different guys like that so in terms of business and mindset and that I really like uh, Ty Lopez, you know, he talks about mentors and reading and, um, you know, like if you look at history, all the great leaders and people that have made a difference in history, they're all leaders, uh, readers. Yep. You know, they're big time readers and he's like, oh yeah, true. And then he gives up all these examples and he gives up all these examples of, um, you know, these great leaders that had mentors, like Plato and uh, I don't even know some of those Greek philosophers but they had him and then you know kobe bryant even he, he talks about he had michael jordan uh and it's, yeah for sure players, and you know like once again this links right back to zealous this links right back to you being a teacher's aide right now is is effectively that's what i don't know if you've really noticed this bro but that's what you are that's what you've been through the time that i've known you is as a mentor for so many people bro like do you ever look at yourself as the mentor yourself do you realize that? <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've gotten that from a few people. Do I realize, I guess I do in a little way, but not really like the way other people see it. You know, um, I have this block in my mind, like, cause people, cause I always say I have, I haven't done anything. And what I mean by that is, oh, cause I wanted to be a professional rugby league player. Right. Yeah. So, cause I didn't make it. I then see that as, you know, it was life, you know, I didn't make it, but I didn't quite crack it. And then with the box, that was my next dream. Right. So I didn't get it to the stage that I wanted it to be. So even though I did well in the league and the box, I still don't see it as like I made it in a way. Yeah. Even though I did a lot of good things. So I don't know. It's just this thing I have to get get over mentally. That I, yeah, you know, that's I'm, just like I it's am men- mentoring people, but I don't feel like it's making as much of an impact as it is. 
do you know what, mate? It's just a, a little limiting belief because you have set these expectations so high for yourself being such a, you know, a, a strong, powerful, well-driven man that you think you didn't make it to your levels. But I yeah. can I can tell you from, you know, deep within my heart, bro, if you look around and you listen to those people that are telling you those things, that you made it. You made it big time. And even if you only ever affect one person, brother, then, you know, think of it from your, your spiritual side, your faith side, then, then you're doing huge things. If you can empower just one person, man, then that's amazing. I appreciate it, man. Uh, th uh, thanks for that. I, yeah, I do know I am. I, yeah, yeah, like you said, I just have this expectation. It's hard to, hard to shake, you know, like, I don't, um, maybe say, so, maybe sounds weird, but, um, uh, I talk to a lot of kids and they don't know what they want to do and they're not sure. I, I've always felt that uh, I must be born with it, eh? like that I've had um, I, a gift in me to do something, to be honest. Um, is, yeah, I've always felt that way. Um, I always, uh, I was a, a high level swimmer when I was younger. And uh, same, same, like I didn't really make it. I, I, I always felt like I had the potential and guys that I used to beat, they went to the Olympics and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, it was tough to deal with. I didn't enjoy that fact because I thought I could always get there, but I never quite, and I probably gave up too early as well and all that sort of stuff. But the thing that I, I realized for me later on in life is I gave myself permission just to be happy with that and accept that, mate, I was put on this earth to teach it. I was put on this earth to coach it. You know, maybe I just wasn't meant to be that, that person, but now I can give to others, you know, like that, that whole idea, you know, you'll see it in the business world. Ty Lopez is all about it as well as that, that gift to be able to serve. Yeah, man. I was really well said. Um, yeah, I heard uh, this guy, um, OPEX, uh, James OPT, and he was saying, like, you know, everybody wants to be, a, you know, big time something, this or that. And I guess, I've always, yeah, I've always had that in me. But there's nothing wrong with just being, you know, a great, great father, you know, great model, role model in your area and, you know, serve your community. And, if you know, wherever, wherever the people you interact with every day, like, there's nothing wrong with that. And I was like, oh, yeah, true. So it's something that I've, I've been coming to terms with probably over the last year or two that uh, maybe, I, yeah, like you said, I'm just, I'm meant to, you know, serve the kids and the community that I might not be on the world stage, but it's all right. Yeah. But it's a, it's a hard thing, you know, for me to accept, but I, I'm, I'm coming to terms with it slowly. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I am making an impact. I am doing things and I'm not where I had it in my mind, but it's still, you know, I'm still doing some good things. Probably. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's why I love having these little conversations, right? Because I'm pretty, I'm, a, I'm I would put millions of dollars on it that we're all the same. We all have these, these great grandeur, the, the, you know, our expectations are, are, are so high. And then when we don't achieve those, those heights, then like, you know, the difference between me and you and other people is we're pushing forward. You know, we, we might not a hundred percent accept it, but we're not like laying down and giving up, right? You're still charging forward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got to keep moving forward. Eh? And that's uh, one of the lessons that uh, Ty taught me in one of his talks. He's, you know, it's not the strongest that survive. It's, it's the uh, strongest or fastest is those that can adapt. Yes. And, and, uh, you know, people get stuck in the past or on one idea or one thought and, and that's it, you know, and they anyway, can't move on, but you got to be able to turn, you know, um, and he gives the analogy, you know, the, the um, you know, when to hold them, when to fold them, that song, The Gambler. Yeah, yeah. The Rogers. You know, so, you know, so Ty's words sort of was like, oh, okay, know when to adapt and when to hold them, when to fold them. And that was sort of, it was a part of my thing with moving on for the box. Like I could have probably held on but then I might have damaged my um, family, you know, added more stress with me and my wife. So it's like, so, you know, sometimes you got to fold them and move on, you know, like, because I've seen, I've seen other box owners, they, they get too fixated and then they miss other things that's going on right in front of them. Yep. Because they didn't know when to fold them or adapt. That was just yeah, like, for sure. this, is it, this is it, no matter what. 
Yeah. And it's I, I guess that balance. can pay off sometimes. Sorry, bro. I cut you off. Carry on. That's not, sorry. It was just last thing. Yeah. And sometimes that can pay off, you know, just, you know, not giving in and just pushing through. And then sometimes maybe there could have been a, you know, change of direction along the way. For sure. And I was going to say, you know, sometimes like when you have a, something that you love and something that you're passionate about, but when you take it to the extreme and it goes and affects everything else and it becomes, you know, detrimental. Yes, it's a positive, healthy thing, but if you push it too hard, then you, you're, you're burning the wrong end of the, the candle, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Cause that's what I started to see in the church sometimes as well. Like I see a lot of great leaders and uh, men and women and doing great things in the community, but then they wouldn't, not all, just some, then they would neglect their own family though. So, you know, everyone else that they're serving out and about was happy and they were, they were seen as uh, great, but they weren't like spending the same sort of time with their kids, you know? Yeah. And, and, like, and once again, yeah, so <laughs> out and about they're seen as legends, but at home they're like, they're not. And you see that everywhere as well. Once again, bro, like, you know, you, you, you think about, uh, well, I don't know if you've had experience, but you always talk to like people that have, you know, been to psychologists or, um, uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, relationship experts or stuff like that. And you talk to them and they have this, all this great advice, great advice, great advice, great advice. And then you find out on behind the scenes that their life is a disaster. <laughs> yeah man exactly so i was like you know i could um be this guy in health and fitness world and you know probably do really well like carry on and you know have a lot of good friends and stuff like that and then have a struggling relationship at home or yeah. you know sort of lose that a little bit but gain you know um because you know as a, as a christian you're supposed to put your family you know obviously i family in that first you know so i was like all right i'm gonna um it talks about like 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 uh christ he laid down his life for the people and the people was the church and so the, the analogy they use is like the man uh and the wife the wife is the church and so we're supposed to be willing to lay down our life for our wives mm-hmm just as Christ laid down his life for the church, the people. Yeah, man. And, and so I'm like, if I choose the pox, then that's not really a good example. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, um, I can't remember what, what philosophy it is. I think it's a Buddhist philosophy that the way that it works is, you know, there's like the triangle and, and you and your relationship with God or spirituality or self or mother nature or being or whomever it is that you, you believe in or you follow is at the top. And then right below that is your significant other, right? And then below that is your children. And then below that is the rest of your family to get sort of cohesiveness. But there's a lot of times in life, once again, where the person that is at the top, this this pyramid gets sort of flipped around. And once again, it comes back to that. You, you can't give if your cup is not full. And that cup being full is, you know, sleeping well, eating well, having a spiritual connection, um, you know, uh, doing the things that are important for you. But then it's got to bleed out to the rest of that pyramid, right? And if it, if it doesn't bleed out in that particular way, then you're just creating controversy for all. Yeah, that's really well said, eh? I agree 100%. Um, like, I have a, a mantra for this year because I, um, you know, have a lot of, you know, you talk with your wife at night in bed and you talk about things and I have a lot of ideas, you know. I'm, I'm all over the place, you know. I want to do this, want to do that. And so uh, at the start of the year, I was like, there's um scripture that says, seek ye first the kingdom and all these other things will be given to you. Mm-hmm. So like every time I get ahead of myself and try to do this and that, I'm like, just seek you first, you know, seek first, you know, my family second, and then whatever from there. If it happens, it happens, but don't put these other things, you know, get the order out of whack. Yep. Yep. You're saying. And so it's not saying no to anything, but it's just like seek first, you know, family. And then if that works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it wasn't meant to be. But yeah. instead of like over, over pursuing something in front of, you know, my, my main values. And I think, you know, like 
I think that's why I really enjoy this medium is because it doesn't put a lot of pressure on, on you as an individual, you, you're a podcaster, right? So, and we just talked about this earlier, like giving yourself that expectation of maybe it's the one a week or it's a couple a week or whatever it is. So you don't burn yourself out. But this median here is, it's just a conversation. It doesn't matter where, where you are at your life. And, you know, like this was originally all based around masculinity and, and manhood and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, it, it's about being the best version of you, right? Yeah, yeah. We're always trying to continually grow and push the needle a little bit. Like every year, you know, we're a little, little bit better. Like I think sometimes us men, we can get, um, like couch potatoes a little bit you know like we just sort of clock in clock out and uh you know like get the kids involved and stuff but we stop pursuing things yeah but we've we've still got to keep pursuing things and keep growing and um have a bit of age about us you know like a bit of excitement that we used to have in our 20s and you know like take some risks you know and it'll not be uncalculated or cavalier about it but yeah take some risks and you know it's, we're telling our kids or you know cousins or nephews or nieces to do this and that but we're sort of not really having a crack at life so sure yeah, we, we, we lose that playfulness are huh? that yeah yeah and that like little riskiness i feel it you know i honestly feel it like um uh my nephews and they're pretty big now and cousins and you know we used to wrestle and now, now i'm like getting a bit scared but i'm like you know i've got to still wrestle and have that bit of um you know, and even with my wife, like, I've got to show that I've still got uh, a bit of risk in me, you know, I'm not a, too safe, you know, I've got to be able to willing to throw down type of thing, you know, like yeah. at moments, be a little bit wild at, at heart type of thing, here and there, yeah, you know, I, not all the time, but yeah. No, I, I love that idea, right? And you look back at like, I don't know, caveman times, that's what it was all about. Like, you had to be that man or you missed out on the mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, see a lot of... Uh, parents like from the sidelines type of thing but i want to try to get involved and um yes yeah, st still see like oh man dad's still doing things dad's still you know he's still having a like he's still got dreams and you know like parents i wrote about a post ages ago about how parents they just put everything into the kids which is cool but then like when their kids move on and stuff and you know they get older and they got they're sort of lost yep but you got to have a few things going yourself as well. Oh, this is what I believe anyway. So I know I uh, totally believe that. And I especially believe that as men, because we get caught up in this, we have to provide, we have to provide, we have to provide. So yeah. what are we doing there? Once again, we, we're giving for everybody else and forgetting about the main man, the number one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a tough one to, to get sometimes, eh? but yeah, you definitely have to, um, you know, spend some time on yourself and your growth and it gives you more energy too. Like for me, like when I do the things I enjoy and like podcasting, connecting with you and other uh, uh, friends and stuff, it gives me energy. So when I do go back to my family and uh, work, I'm a better version. Yep. Whereas if I'm just sort of ticking the box of doing what I'm supposed to do, um, I get a bit flat, you know, type of thing. You need just a bit gonna of spont just gonna write spontaneity. That. I'm just going to write that down because I think that might be uh your thumbnail for the YouTube, right? Like just ticking the <laughs> box. Well, no, it's true, bro. Like there's so many people that just go through and tick the box. And, 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 you know, like life is so much more than that because like this on this earth, <laughs> it's a limited time. So what, you don't want to live a tick the box lifestyle, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I heard a really good, uh, podcast. This guy, um, he talked about like energy. So what he, he says we, you know, we all got the same time, so we can't do anything about that. But what we can do is we can, we can increase our energy. Yep. So we can be more productive and just give, you know, better to things. And so what he said was activity. I did it. He goes, you write like a scale of uh, minus one, minus two, minus three, and then you do like a plus one, plus two, plus three, and yep. you write down all the things you do, and you you grade them, and then you try to like. Uh, automate delegate i can't remember the other one all the things that take away energy for you yep so automate delegate eliminate yeah eliminate and then the things that do give you energy you try to do more of those because you know time we can't do anything but energy we can yeah and so 
you know, there's some things you do have to tick the boxes because that's life. Like you have to work, you like oh, to do, sure, the yeah. you do, do the dishes, cook dinner. But then there's these other times, these little gaps we have, that's where we can do the energy things, whatever it is, the meditation or the breathing or the working out. That's when you can do your plus one, plus two or plus three uh, things. Yep. Or, yeah, spend time with someone. And those things give you energy for when you do like the rest of it. And so I, I've done that and it was a really good activity. I would recommend it. It was really cool. Yeah, I love it. Love it. So this is the great thing about these conversations, right? You 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 continue, but like once again, it's coming back to filling your cup, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's. I found it really hard to do that. Um, to be honest, like what I was saying with the box in the early days, I was always out, out, and I just didn't get it. And I heard it a few times, but um, I don't know. I guess it was just one of those things. Like I had to walk through in life to to get it and understand the lesson. I had to. Uh, you know, feel the pain, feel the pain a bit before the the lesson was learned. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tough thing, especially like in you know the culture. It's like a yeah, pleasing people, and you know, I was a bit yeah, I'm a bit like that naturally, I guess. Being yeah, like a yes guy and saying no, it can be hard, you know. But um, it's definitely uh, a better way to go, uh, filling your own cup. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, so where to from uh, from here for you, bro? Like uh, CrossFit level. Are you still competing or like is it just keeping up with keeping up with the the family growing up now no no i'm not competing i'm i'm actually looking to compete like uh, i've got a few little goals like a powerlifting comp um i haven't got a particular order because of the lockdown and all that sort of stuff but powerlifting uh kettlebell there's a kettlebell sport um what was the other one? Maybe, maybe possibly a bodybuilding comp, but just all the iron stuff, um, you know, all the training methods and different things. I, I love all of it, but I think at, uh, at the heart of it, I, I just love lifting weights eh? and, and the, the real uh, <laughs> old school gritty stuff, you know, just kettlebells, uh, lifting heavy things, you know, uh, so that would be the power of thing. I've done a strongman comp. I've done a weightlifting comp. So I actually got inspired because I saw a couple of friends, they have um, pictures of their dads on their wall. Like it's all black, gray, you know, white. Was it black and white pictures? And yep. their dads like used to do like bodybuilding or like, um, I was like, man, those are cool. So I'm inspired by my daughter to like, you know, she can look back and be like, man, my dad competed in like strongman and weightlifting and powerlifting. Like, he just really had a go at life. Yeah, 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 so that's, yeah. That's, that's my goal now is to still compete. Um, I don't think I'd be any good at any of those things, but I just want to tick them off, um, you know, and then uh, so my daughter can see, like, if I'm trying to push her to have a crack at life, then then I am as well. Yeah, I am. Um, I must say, bro, I enjoyed watching that 140 uh, clean and jerk, bro. Uh, like, <laughs> see, see, this is you once again, eh? Like, oh, yeah, it's all right. 140 kg, bro. You know how many dudes only struggle to deadlift that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess it's one of those things. Uh, yeah, like with the CrossFit, eh, is like it was another one too because I was I was in the mix at that stage. In the mix, you were right up there, brother. Come on, give yourself <laughs> some credit. You were right up there. But yeah, I don't know. In my own mind, I never quite got to that next next you know next level. Like oh, I knew I was in there, but I didn't quite get to you know the spot that I wanted to get into. <laughs> hey bro, I know it's getting late there and I appreciate you jumping on board and it's awesome catching up with you and your Canadian hat. That's uh that's awesome. <laughs> one I, thing, do, uh, man. I loved it. I loved it there. One thing uh leading out, bro, if there's one thing that one sort of tip or tool or strategy or advice that you could give to the the men listeners right now just to keep pushing forward in life, would what would that be? Keep pushing forward in life. Uh... Yeah. I think um I guess it goes back to my gift, you know, just trying to be grateful. Um I have a practice that I've got. I write three things I'm grateful for every day. And it's hard to be uh you know, negative when you when you look at those things every day. Like yeah, so I recommend uh yeah, a lot of guys look at it as a little bit uh, a little bit soft or whatever, but yeah, wake up, write three things you're grateful for. It doesn't have to be big, but yeah, it's hard to be negative when you when you see those things. So, attitude of gratitude, uh, type of thing. So, Dude, always I'm, try to be grateful. I'm huge on it. I'm huge on it. I don't know. Uh, 
if you saw my thing the other week yeah but in, in our house we have a like just a whiteboard uh, and it's a gratitude board and we do it every single day my five-year-old jumps up there and he puts his gratitude on the board and as you said like it is physically and mentally impossible to be grateful and angry at exactly the same time right so living from gratitude is just like number one in my book so it's great to hear that come from you brother yeah man it's it seems like uh like oh no nah, it wouldn't work it's it's you know like from the outside you know like but when you actually do it it actually does work for sure for sure hey man like i said it's really great catching up with you thanks for being on board today uh, i wish you the best with all your endeavors where can people catch your podcast bro um yeah it's a zealous state of mind so yeah doing podcasts um i'm trying to uh i'm creating a brand of a of like clothing and that sort of stuff and then oh wicked yeah yeah so um just in the beginnings of that and then what else uh probably get into some like coaching stuff later on but that'll be more new zealand like uh, yeah man i you need to give me I'll, i'll connect with you and grab your links hey one important thing i forgot zealous state of mind zealous crossfit and i know on your back you have the word zealous (laughs) where did that all come from bro like i i love it i absolutely 100 percent love it and and like (laughs) that that is your brand as soon as you said i'm i was like bro i would buy a top with zealous (laughs) straight up straight away where does zealous come from you in your life see man so yeah there was a little phase like i was saying when i went to went moved back to aussie to pursue the rugby league dream and um I was, yeah, when that fell through, I was a bit lost, you know, as you, as you are, having these bum jobs and stuff. And before I got into the PT, um, there was a little phase where I was like, me and my mate, he's an artist. I was like, let's 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 create a brand, man. Like, because he was quite good at drawing and that. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Ken, whatever. Um, uh, was it, what name we're going to use? I was like, oh, I'm not sure. And he's like, oh, I think of one and we'll, we'll make it happen. So I went away and I was reading, you know, as I do, as <laughs> I was reading, I, my daily read is reading the Bible and it had the word zealous and my last name's Zabowski. So I like words with Z and then I looked it up and it means like eager, passionate, you know, it was saying like, if you're zealous for something, it means you're, you know, right into it. And so I brought it back to my mate and, um, uh, he just drew it on like a piece of paper. And then I was like, all right. So, you know, me being a man of action, um, <laughs> li- literally like, you know, that afternoon we were down printing shirts and um he he was shocked he was like what he's like, he didn't expect it so fast so yeah one word one day we we're talking about it the next day we had some shirts and we we're just selling them back out of the back of his boot and out of the house and uh yeah so that's where zealous came from so everything we did from there i did I, like i had a social tag team it's called zealous and a social basketball team it's called zealous so when i moved to aussie i uh, back to new zealand to, to open the box you know the family's like what's the name gonna be like, it's got to be zealous you know so yeah man <laughs> that's how it came about i so love it and i you know like i i look forward to continuing the brand and like as soon as you get those sweaters bro just let me know and I'll, i'm i'm there i'm gonna bring zealous to canada all right it's nice man it's cool to hear yeah and the the zealous state of mind is think um because we love new york when we when we travel there and um these you know the new york state of mind uh the jay-z song yeah great yeah. song great song and old uh, Frank Sinatra's from there, you know, he's obviously a legend in uh, New York. And um, he says, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Mm-hmm. And so we sort of um, added the zealous state of mind, like, you know, if you can make it here, like it's got that bit of swagger about it. For sure. You know, like, so that, yeah, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. That zealous state of mind, like that hustle, you know, that um, never give in, all that sort of type of thing. For sure. And that's where it all connects. Yeah, yeah that's where it I all. love it. I love it. So, yeah. <laughs> Keep doing that. I look forward to seeing where it goes. Oh, cheers, man. Yeah, I'll keep you updated. And thanks for having me on, man. It was awesome. Good chat. And it was, it was good to talk with someone so like mine and been through uh, similar experiences and learn a lot of the same lessons. And, um, you know, obviously putting a lot of good uh, content and messages out there. So, well, I mean, the good that's work the thing, too, like, bro. I, my, my belief is we all have this in us, right? Even the people that are sort of down in the dumps right now, we all, every single person has like this glimmer of light. And like I said, if, if you can just 
If you can only affect one person in this world, then you've made it. It doesn't matter. Like one person is enough. So, you know, like I know having you on board on this podcast, when we throw it out there, bro, it'll connect with way more than just one person. Cheers, man. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And it gave me a lot of energy as well. So, Good man. Well, we'll have man. you back for round two shortly. See you, man. Okay, brother. Peace out. Thanks. Thanks.